What up, what up, what up, what up? Welcome back to the Keep It A Buck podcast. I'm your host, Sonny. Thank you to the return listeners. Y'all already know what time it is. If this is your first time here, this is a show about relationships, black men's emotions, God, self-awareness, and black women's value in our culture. You total all them up, and that's the world. Hey, you can try to challenge me. Email the show. Wow, it's right there. What's good? We do temperature checks around here if this is your first time. Uh, so what's happening? What's happening? What's going on with you? What's happening in your life, personally? Like, how you feeling? You know what I mean? Because, y'all, all right. Because I know some... Chill, 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 chill. Because I know I got some liars. They don't be lying to me. They want to lie to themselves. Who was the last person to piss you off? Think about it. Who was the last person to piss you off? I mean, piss you off. And how did you deal with it? What you did? Who was the last person? You can go ahead and pause it. Somebody, it probably was somebody uh, in traffic for a couple of y'all. A couple of y'all need that road rage to get that out before y'all get to work, or y'all take that out on Terry from uh from from finance. But all right, hopefully you ain't wild out too much on that nigga. Speaking of wild out, I'm over. I'm a, I'm 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 gonna jump right into the you play too much. Yeah, I mean, y'all already know what it is. And the YouTube, you play too much today. It's me again. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm most nominated. I'm always nominated. So, uh, this one's called College Crybaby. So, it was freshman year of college. I stayed at the crib. You know what I'm saying? I went to the community college at the crib. A couple of my best and closest friends. They uh, roomed together at Wayne State University in Detroit. So one weekend, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, hey, I'm gonna come down there and I'm gonna mess with y'all. You know what I mean? Let's let's how 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 it go? We used to go out in this spot called JB's in Flint, and uh, never would have made it. That's why I believe in God. Shouldn't have made it up out of there. You know what I'm saying? They get to shoot in the parking lot on Friday, and then we'll come back the next Friday. Idiots. But anyway, we used to always party together. So I'm like, all right, let me party with y'all on campus. You know what I mean? Let me see it. Let me see what it be like. I'm trying to see what that be like. So we end up going to a party. Party was straight. And um, so if you don't know about Detroit culture, it's something called jitting, right? And it's like it's it's house music. You got I think Jersey got a, a form of it. Uh, New Orleans, Chicago, Detroit, house music. That's a that's a thing, right? You know what I'm saying? It don't make you like oh he like that. Like look at that dancing nigga. No, look at that dancing nigga. He killing that shit with ice on and everything. Like and jitting jit. You know how to jit? Like if you can jit, that's a thing, bro. Like. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna t- I should have dropped a video of somebody killing it right here, but I don't want I don't, don't want to claim one side, one set that I don't know nothing about. You know what I'm saying? I can't jit. You know what I mean? Like that? I can't jit. So jitting is a serious, serious thing, right? So whenever uh, it's so serious that it'll be a jit set. You know what I mean? Like Florida, y'all stole that. Y'all stole that. But it'll be a jit set and DJ get into his bag and or whatever, and. It'll be, you know, it'll be like a fight circle, like fight, fight, and everybody crowding around and somebody about to fight. That's how it would be in the jit circle. And, you know, in the dance circle, it go around, it go around, boom. Then who's next? Then somebody just jump in or whatever. So this this jit circle had been going on for like a song and a half or whatever, and it's getting bigger and bigger. And now, you know, the competition is like this shit, like, uh, what's my man? They fought in blood sport. Once you finally got to the Chinese, the Chinese nigga with the big chest. I was the only one, I only seen one Chinese nigga with a big, with, 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 with a strong ass chest. And that's my man from blood sport. What's his name? He kicked his ass. But anyway, the competition is getting more stiff. Pause. They in there killing it now. So I'll make my way. You know, you, what's going on? What's going on? You know how you do on the movies when they're trying to see when once somebody killed their brother. What's happening? What's happening? That's my brother. But so I make my way to the front of the circle or whatever. Boom. They killing the jit. And it's like the double dutch. You got to catch a rhythm. And enough people around you got to notice. Oh, shit. This nigga's trying to get in it. You know what I'm saying? He got that bop. He waiting on somebody to stop. He trying to get in it. You know what I'm saying? So once you know you got enough attention, they like, oh, we got another valuable candidate. 
And especially if it's heating up, you got to know how to jit. If you're going to get with it right now, you must know how to jit. So I'm like, I'm going to get in this thing. Boom. It's hype. I finally realized, all right, they about to let me in it. It's my turn. All right, here we go. Boom. 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 Hops in there, right to the middle of the, of the, of the jit circle. Immediately hits the floor. Bow! Right to the ground. And you're not supposed to do this. This jit, they taking this serious. I go face first down to the ground on all fours. And you know what I do? I don't know if you know this or where you from, but it's a dance called the crybaby. That means your knees is on the ground, your elbows and forearms on the ground, all right? And you got your ass kind of in the air, and it's kind of like a hump, but you with one with, with one hand, you with one fist, you pump the ground like a baby crying, like wham, like <laughs> so, so, so you're supposed to. When your fist hit the ground, that's the same time your tor you do the torso thrust. And that's what I'm doing on the ground in the middle of the jit circle. And needless to mention, I ruined the jit circle. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, who could follow that, bro? Like, I ruined the jit circle. Niggas was upset. I don't even think I got no play the rest of the party, you want to be honest. But to me, this shit was worth it. <laughs> that's, that's the college cry, baby. I don't know if you ever tried to enter a dance circle and do your own shit. But if you have, you already know what to do. Email the show, bro. <laughs> we got you. Bow, bow. But you want to be honest? I was killing that shit. Never again in my life have I have I. Yes, I did. I cry, baby, again. But that's that's for another. That's another story for another time. All right, let's move on. We bike like a huffy. All right, let's jump right into today's topic, and that's um. And I figured this out while I was literally running, but run through your second win. All right? So first and foremost, let me tell y'all, second win is a real thing. I don't know if I just heard that just come from coming from sports or whatever, but it's just natural turn for me now. A second win. It's a real thing. Um. So this episode specifically came from... I was in the midst of, you know, trying to get back into working out and running. And I maybe had went five out of the nine days or whatever, something like that. And I did not want to go, man. I think I probably had, was drinking the night before. I was relaxing. I just did not want to run. I felt heavy. I just didn't feel in the mood to be doing no running, getting out there and doing no running. So I don't know why, but... I got out there and I ran and I started running and I said, fuck, I felt terrible. As soon as I started, I'm like, man, dang, let me keep going. But I, I feel really bad. <laughs> this doesn't feel good. So I was focused on how bad it felt, but I was like, all right, I'm going to just keep running. And I was focused on trying not to make it feel bad anymore. And then I just got to thinking like, dang, why did I eat that? Why did I do that? Why did I do that? So I wasn't paying attention to the run anymore. I was on autopilot. And my second win had kicked in. Now, I didn't want to run. And because I didn't do what I was supposed to do the day before, mentally, I felt like I could not run or I should not be running. But my body went to autopilot and that second win kicked in. And that was one of the best runs that I had had. And it really jump spark me consistently getting out there but i had to run to my second win now i had to trick myself and distract myself so it came to me by accident that time but i wasn't paying attention and because i got to my second win i was able to continue based on the work that i had put in not based on what i think that i could put out not based on what i think think my output could, could be or even what I wanted my output to be it wasn't based on that it was based on the work that I had already put in not the output that I wanted so I had to look it up you know what I'm saying because I was just thinking about like how impressive the second win is to have a second win and that's with anything 
So I'm saying that and I started out with me running, but you have to have a second win in anything. There is nobody at the top of any craft, business, sport, field that did not tap into their second win. Because we all the same, right? We just very different variations of the same being, but we all the same. So we all share the same emotions. Some of us lean towards different emotions more than others or whatever, but we all are the same being. We all have the same uh, makeup. And in this life, if you try for anything, especially anything great, you're going to get beat up and you're going to need some reinforcement. You're going to need some backup. And sometimes somebody else is not going to be there. You're going to have to back yourself up with that encouragement to yourself or maybe that financial s deposit to yourself or maybe that time effort, whatever it is, whatever sacrifice that you got to make. When you're going for something great, you're going to need your second win. So I started to say to myself, well, what is a second win exactly? You know what I mean? Because I've said just I use it so fluently and just use it casually. What is a second win? I couldn't find a proper definition so I'm going to tell y'all what the, a second win is. This is the definition of a second win. The reserve energy and skill only used when summoned by an emptying tank. Y'all know how we do. I'm going to read it again. Second win. The reserve energy and skill only used when summoned by an emptying tank now it's important to pay attention to the only first as we go through this and we explore this make sure that you're not ignoring the only i'm gonna read it again just so you're like okay what about the only so you don't have to rewind it but the button right there second win the reserve energy and skill only used when summoned by an emptying tank so just in my running example my mind was somewhere else my mind's telling me stop for real my mind was somewhere else questioning the decisions that i had made the day before so i i couldn't be like all right second win boom i want my second win right now first of all i wasn't thinking about it so I didn't ask for my second win to kick in. I was thinking about how bad I felt. But remember, the second win is the reserve energy and skill only used when summoning by an emptying tank. So my body also felt the liquor that I had drunk last night and the decision that I had made before. My body felt that. And it went automatically to the second win because it was summoned by an emptying tank. It was figuring out, all right, what we got right now in the in the first tank, the original one that's supposed to be full of nutrients, it ain't much there. Oh shit! It's like when they hear the when you in in the platoon in war or whatever, and then you hear the 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 sirens or whatever go, oh oh oh, woo! Everybody gotta get up. It's all hands on deck. That's what the second wind is. The second wind is all hands on deck. But you don't need everybody. You just need somebody on lookout. Normally, you can't have everybody on lookout because somebody needs some sleep. And everybody ain't attacking all the time. So you just need a certain group on lookout. When it's all hands on deck, that means we're we giving everything. We're giving everything. Pass working out. We're giving everything in that cheerleading competition. We're giving everything in that science fair. We're getting, giving everything in that shoe cleaning business. We're giving everything. And you can't buy a second win. You can't be gifted a second win. It don't matter who your daddy is. It don't matter who your mama is. It don't matter who your family is. It don't matter how much money you got. It don't matter what you look like. You can't buy a second win. And you can't, can't nobody give you a second win. A second win is innate. Everybody got a second win. They just, whether they choose to acknowledge it or not, and some of ours are stronger than others, and some just don't know how to tap into the second win. But you can't buy a second win. Damn, I can't, I ain't never figured out my second win. Let me just go purchase it because I figured out a way to get money. So let me get the second win. Nah, -uh. ain't, no, ain't no second win store. Or somebody who figured out their second win and how to attack things, 
they can't give you uh, theirs. Here you go. You can have some of my second win. Boom. I did it like this. You do. Here you go. You got it now. You got the juice now. You got the second win. Because I got the second win, I'm going to give it to you. You know me. You hang with me all the time. We cousins. So I'm just going to give you some of my second win. That ain't how it works. A second win is innate. It's inside. So we talking about something that's natural. And we talking about the natural power of you to be able to recognize, utilize the ability of having a second win. Something truly, truly valuable and something that for some of us, for some people, they don't know anything about a second win because to them, it's a wall. And they never got over that wall to realize, oh, shit, this is the second win right here. This is the second half of the race. This is the second part. This is when I gain more because they stop at that wall. So for half of us. Ain't no second win. It's just a wall. You know the people. You know the type. Lot as a motorbike. Wouldn't bust a grape in a fruit fight. You know the people who ain't never tried nothing, but always got an excuse. That's because they ain't hit their second win. Or they or, 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 or I ain't gonna say they never tried nothing. They got into trying something, but they ain't never finished nothing. They never hit the second level of anything. They never hit that 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 that, that new plateau. They never hit a new sector of it. That never happened because they didn't get to their second win. Well, they got to their second win, but they misidentified their second win with a wall. Don't let your second win be confused with a wall. The point before that second win. Because once you get over that wall, for one, if once you, you get to the wall and you get over that wall, let's just take it physically. You do that. Can't nobody take from you that you got over the wall. They can't take that from you. So now I know, all right, I did this much of the race, and I didn't climb this motherfucking wall. So I got that in my back pocket that I can do it, right? So if you think about that second win as a wall, once you climb it, can't nobody take it from you. You didn't climb it. You already said what you had to say, little floor. You didn't climb it. Can't nobody take it from you. So mentally, you got that part. And then if you put some work in, and that's another thing about second win. The second win don't matter. It ain't worth shit if you ain't never put no work in. So if you ain't put no work in or nothing, don't expect to have no second win. I'm not even talking to you. Well, I am talking to you, but go put some work in. Then come back. Go put your 10,000 hours in or go approach your 10,000 hours. Or just start with the 100 hours. Whatever it is. If you just need to get out there on that track and start walking, start walking. Try to try to walk every day. You ain't going to be able to walk every day, but try to walk every day. Damn, I walked five days this week. Dang, this whole month, I didn't walk 21 days. That's most of the month. What Whatever it is, go put foot to ass, and then you're going to realize this. Then we can have a second win conversation. But until you start something and put in that work and put in that effort, I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the people who 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 gonna put in that effort, who didn't already put in that effort, who didn't already dug deep. No matter what result then came out of it, they didn't already put in that work. That's who I'm talking to when I'm speaking about a second win, because we all got a second win. But a second win is like a muscle, and like any muscle, you gotta build that muscle. And if you ain't never tried that, then second win, like I say, it's an alarm system. And if you ain't never put in a, a, a bunch of work, th- that second win been sleep. Y'all ain't needed all hands on deck. So I'm just chilling in pre- preparation for if y'all need all hands on deck. And you know what happened when you don't utilize a muscle. Your second win got bed rest. If you ain't never tried it, then your second win got bed rest and uh, dust bunnies. Ain't that what they call it? Your second win... It's on, it's on bed rest because you ain't you you ain't it ain't needed to come because remember I said only right the energy and skill only used when summoned by an emptying tank you can't you can't call it you can't you can't ring the alarm 
The only thing that's going to ring the alarm is an emptying tank. And the only way you get to an emptying tank is by doing some type of work. And if you barely did anything, any work, by the time that tank is empty and the first time that second wind come out, it's going to be like hibernation. Fat, lazy, Larry Holmes. You got to put the work in to have a second wind worth mentioning. You got to know what a crumpet is to know a cricket. Shout out to Raphael. And so when, we, when, I, when I speak about the second wind, you can't buy it. It's innate. That means it came from God, y'all. Like, maybe a scientist can explain it. Maybe. But I ain't no scientist. That ain't why y'all here. Go to Bill Nye shit. Go to Bill Nye podcast if that's what y'all want. Is it? Who number two? Like, scientist-wise. Like, as far as famous scientists. Oh, Neil. Neil. Mm. Mm. Maybe Steve Hawkins, was he a scientist? All right, whatever, I digress. But I don't have the science behind it. But I'm saying the second win, it, that's, it comes from God. And the second, so a Chevy is built, right, for 120 miles per hour. They say it got 120 miles per, per hour on a dashboard on that Chevy. You don't get to decide what's too hard. You don't get to decide what's pushing the gas too much. The manufacturer does. The manufacturer decided, all right, all the parts of this car that we put together, together, this is how fast this vehicle can go. Boom. Uh, 90? No, we've tested it. It can go 120 miles per hour. Because of what we put into it, we put this much horsepower into it. We put this into it. We made it this aerodynamic. We made the steering to be able to do this. Whatever it is, the manufacturer is the one that decides how fast the car goes. You don't get to get in a Chevy and say, oh, the fastest this can go is 85. No. They're telling you, the manufacturer say, no, it can go 120. If you decide to stop at 85, totally fine. That's cool. But that ain't hot. That ain't. The top, that's not the max. You don't get to decide that just because you're in the driver's seat. You're in the driver's seat, but you didn't manufacture that car. That car has a manufacturer. And, and who gave you your second win? Who it come from? God. And who created your body? God. That Chevy was born, was built in a shop that has a manufacturer. Your body, you, you have a manufacturer. You have a manufacturer. You did not create yourself. As much as you want to take credit for all the stuff you be able to do, and you do get some credit in some of the work that you put in and all this, but you have a manufacturer, which means you don't get to, get to decide what's too much. That second win is innate. It'll let you know that light going to come on. That light going to come on if it's, if, it's, if, it's, if it's going too much or you're going to start to lose control. But you don't just get to mentally decide, all right, well, this is what my body is capable of. You don't, No, 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 no. You can try and strive and be like, all right, I want to be capable of this much. But the manufacturer is the one who gets to make that decision. The, the, the uh, uh, speedometer say 120 miles an hour per hour. That's how fast it can go. Don't bullshit me and tell me that it can only go 93. You making that decision, but the manufacturer says otherwise. Aha, aha. You just steering, but you are not the manufacturer of, of that mode of transit. You're not the manufacturer. You're not the horsepower behind it. You're not the engine. You're not the driving force. But you can choose not to drive. You always got that choice where you can choose not to drive. But you're not the manufacturer. You're not the driving influence. You're not the power. You can spark it, and you without you, it can't, it don't matter. It is um, it's idle without you. It's idle without you. So you are very important because you have to jump start it or it won't or it won't be worth anything. What good is gold if it's underground? If it ain't been dug? If you don't know it's there? If you ain't dug to that, then what good is gold? It's just dirt. 
Yellow dirt. <laughs> uh, but like, yeah, like I'm saying, God is your manufacturer. So in the human body, that's another thing. The human body is able to do stuff that you really, we really just cannot fathom and cannot imagine. You couldn't imagine. Couldn't nobody tell you if none of this stuff never happened to humans and you just didn't know. Couldn't nobody tell you. I mean, just honestly, just it's going to sound crazy, but grow up. Babies come. Listen, I didn't have some sex. You know what I mean? And I, I mean, it's, it's always, you know, at, at most it's an elevator. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never walked into like a big room. At most it's an elevator. So I'm saying it's snug. I say that to say a baby come out of there. If somebody told you that and you didn't know that was fact, and they was like, yeah, you know that same place, that little hole or whatever? Yeah, a baby come out of there. The head and everything? Yeah, the whole bitch, the whole baby go come out of there. <gasps> well, what happens to the hole? Oh, no, it go back. It go back because eventually they say six weeks with some freaks. <laughs> you know what I mean? They say six weeks with some freaks. Y'all know y'all go a little faster. But the human body is just capable of doing Doing things that you can not imagine because you are not the manufacturer. This is gonna sound lame, but David just being like, you know what I'm saying? But he realized he already had his encounters where what happened? Why y'all let my man talk like that? My man talking greasy as hell. Who who you talking about? That giant. But he's saying he's saying God ain't shit. Y'all gonna let him say that? All right, pussy. Watch this, pussy. <laughs> like he, but he had already fought lions and bears. Like he had already had his test, and he had already known, and God had already showed him, "I'm the manufacturer, and you capable of doing this." Before he killed those lions and bears, he didn't know he can kill those lions and bears. He didn't know that going out to the field. He didn't tell us that. Hey, don't worry, y'all. When y'all send me out there, if any lions and bears come, I know I can kill them. He didn't have that mindset going in, but when it happened, the manufacturer had to tell him and show him, this is what you're capable of, because I'm showing you this for a reason, because I'm going to need you to use this a little later on. I'm your manufacturer, and I'm telling you, this is what you can do. So when it came time around for just the giant, a nine-foot nigga talking crazy, he talking crazy about my man who already showed me, my man, my manufacturer, what I can do, what else you say? Watch this. <laughs> Watch this. And he got down with that nigga because he knew that what the manufacturer told him it was capable of doing. You kill lions and bears with your bare hands? Man, I'm for, man, I got a slingshot. Yeah. I'm finna take him out. And on top of that, like, at the Joe Lewis Arena. I know how to rumble. I didn't got into it with the animals. I'm gonna take his head too. Hey, I'm, just so y'all know, just so y'all know, I can go 120 in this thing. Here go his head. This wasn't no fluke. That wasn't no fluke. It's me, Cube, and Snoop. It ain't a fluke. That was not a fluke. They he took his head off, but he knew the manufacturer had to show and prove to him, you are capable of this. And he had already been through that and trusting with the manufacturer. So the human body is capable of doing far more than you can imagine. So you got to let go and realize you ain't in control. All you're doing is jump starting. And all you got to do is run to your second win. But you're not in control when that second win comes. Now you are, you are in control of, of how many times it's summoned. If you keep doing something, so if you keep going at that business, even though you lost some money, if you keep going at becoming a better in a relationship, a better father, even though your kid's been ignoring you, you tried this way with them and they growing up, they don't want to talk to you. You try to take them to the place where they used to have fun. They don't want to go there. But when they go there with their mom, it seemed like they had fun. You didn't try a bunch of different ways, but you got to realize the manufacturer made you capable of. Of that love. You're supposed to have that love that you desire from your kids. You're supposed to have that business that's going to take care of you and your family that you want. You're supposed to have that platform to be able to speak to people to change lives. You're supposed to have that. And your manufacturer made you equipped enough to handle that. But you just got to keep going in a different way. You have to keep going to your second win. You have to because it ain't up to you. You can't imagine the heights that you want to get to. If you can see what it looked like from up there, 
you might be afraid of heights. You might be afraid of how high you really want to go. You might be afraid to go that high. So you, if you get a glimpse from up there, you might say, oh, shit. Like when somebody about to go skydiving or about to go on a roller coaster and they wait in that long ass line and they get right to the top and they realize or they look down. No, I don't want to go. So if God showed you and gave you that, that true glimpse, some of us wouldn't even go because it would scare us so much. And me included. A lot of things. If done the right way in the correct way, it's scary if everything goes right sometime. It's scary. And if you could as, as, as much as high as you want to go, you're not able to see it from that perspective for a reason. So you got to work to and through that because you're not able to see it like that because you can't imagine or fathom what the human body is capable of, what you are capable of that God is about to take you through. Because you are built to endure. Like, oh, it's a bunch of stories of a bunch of people and you. Everybody got their own story where something could have defeated you. Like, we not supposed to be here. We're supposed to be here, but it's not supposed to be like this. The world wasn't supposed to be full of sin, but that's the cards that we was dealt. So, this is not how it was supposed to be. So... The flesh and all that temptation, all the things that come along with it is something that we have to deal with. And everybody's going to be tempted and everybody's going to falter. Every single person is going to falter. That, become, that, that is the human experience. God is your, your, your father, your leader, your manufacturer, but he ain't here. I'm looking for daddy. Daddy ain't here. God ain't here. You ever seen that with somebody about to fight or something? Your mama ain't here. Your brother ain't here. It's just you. You got to deal with that. Now, you can lean on him for his guidance and he going to make sure that you got everything that you need because you are built to endure. But he not here. You just got to get to your second win and realize, shit, I just got to keep going. I failed two college classes, but I got to keep going. I got to figure this out. I tried this, this, and that with my kids. It's not working. It's really frustrating me. I'm crying, whatever. But what I'm going to do, stop and just not have a relationship with that kids, with my kids that I des desire. Do you, is that really what you think God wants? Do you think really God really didn't put the makeup in you, enough in you to be able to figure out how to have that relationship with your kids, a beautiful relationship with your kids? Do you really think God didn't put that in you? No, of course he did. You were built to endure. So you were built to endure that pain of that relationship. You were built to endure that pain of that firing. You were built to endure that pain of that weight gain. You were built to endure that pain of that weight loss. You were built to endure that pain of the loss of a loved one, of a parent, of a sister, of a brother, of a child. I know you can't fathom it because I can't fathom it. Lord, please don't let it happen. Losing a kid, your kid ain't supposed to go before you, so you can't even think of that. But you actually built to be able to endure that, or he wouldn't let it be possible. You don't get to, like I said, you don't get to, to, to that second win is that energy and skill only used when summoned by an emptying tank. You don't get to choose the understanding of everything. That's what the beautiful part about God and God being that being. We in his image, but... If he gave us the his glasses to be able to see, we wouldn't be able to focus on doing our part. Don't try to play God because you ain't got his vision. That's just plain and simple. And it's a reason that you don't have his vision. He's the omega and you can't handle that. You can't handle that. Sometimes you the money you got, you want more money. You can't, he looking at you like, you can't handle that because the money that I'm giving you now, you can't handle. Sometimes it's simple. You know what I'm saying? We try to make it like, well, why God, why this? Just, well, look what you're doing with the money I'm giving you now. And you want me to give you more money? Why? Because you want it? Nah. You ain't use your energy and skill so it can be summoned for your second win. You ain't use that because what I gave you now, you ain't able to handle that. No. 
but you are built to endure by the manufacturer. So we are, we all know that, we broke that down, that we are built to endure. It ain't your decision. The manufacturer got you. Um, but, yeah, I spoke about us jump-starting it, right? Because it don't have no, it don't matter about the power that it got, the horsepower, or none of that, if we don't even get in and start it. So you got you you have to win mentally before you even get to that second win if you know that the manufacturer is in control of how how you feel don't matter how how fast you feel the car can go don't matter how much effort you feel like you can put into this don't matter if you trust the manufacturer it does not matter how you feel your feelings don't matter when you are going after that goal. Your feelings don't matter. Not if you in conjunction with the manufacturer. Not if this the vehicle that you didn't bought. Your feelings don't matter on how fast it can go. It does not matter. You have to run through that wall. It don't matter of when you see that wall, that wall looks so tall or it look like a brick wall and you don't think that you can break it down. That don't matter. How you feel does not matter. It's about the manufacturer. If you trust the manufacturer. If you know that manufacturer is in control. So if you know that God is in control, then it don't matter. It don't matter how you feel. You built to be able to do whatever it is that you set out to do. And a lot of times we set out to do something and then do something else. But us setting out and starting the other thing is what jump started what the manufacturer already put inside of us to be what we're supposed to be. So how you feel don't matter. How I felt during that initial run did not matter because my mind was somewhere else, but my second win kicked in only when summoned by an emptying tank. So you got to run through that wall. And I say that when I say run through the wall, test your limits. Like when you what practice is, is, is when you test things out. That's when you test your limits. You don't get in the game and run your fastest. You need to know how fast you can go in practice. So there are going to be different avenues and different spots for you for you to be able to test your limits. So that has to be a a a, 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 a exercise that you do willingly and often. You have to test your limits. If you always stop at that wall, then how will you know? How will you know what would have happened if you ran into the wall? If you always stop. I get sometimes, sometimes, some things are too daunting at some points in our life. But that don't mean that you can't go back to it. But if you always stop at that wall, at that first piece of adversity, if you always stop, then how will you know? Like, are you comfortable dying not knowing? Just not knowing. That's not going to kill you not knowing what if I just did just that one time. Sometimes you know what that is, the second wall is? It's beating a nigga ass. Now, that don't always have to be physical, but sometimes you got to stick up for yourself. You in situations where you got a boss or you got somebody who feel like it's a power dynamic, but you built to endure. You already know what you can manufacture. You need to test your limits. Sometimes that's going back at somebody and sticking up for yourself. Oh, that wasn't a wall at all. I went through that. Balls and all. That wasn't a wall at all. But you got to test your limits. If you always cower at that point, you think, oh, I guess that's just how it is. That's how the power dynamic is. I'll always be on this side of the power dynamic because that's how somebody said it was. No, what did the manufacturers say? And you ain't going to know until you put the pedal to the metal. You got to test your limits. If you always stop, you will never know. Just that alone should push you through some doors of continuing to do some things. Just not knowing. Just I have to know what would happen if I put that effort forward when I got to that wall. What would happen when, when that second win was summoned by my emptying tank because I went so hard to get to that wall, but I'm running so hard because I want to run through that wall. What's going to happen when I get to that second win? I can't die not knowing that. Um, 
Yeah, like, don't you want to know how high you can soar? Like, sometimes it's scary if you get that initial look without doing none of the work. But if you didn't put in some of the work, you already halfway there. If you're trying to get to yourself to the point where you run a 5K and sometimes you're struggling during your 3K run, when you advance, say what you want to say about getting that 5K, you're already halfway there. All right, sometime during your 3K run, you having some struggle. you already halfway there. So when you look, now it might not be as scary because you're halfway there. But if you're coming from the bottom of the mountain and you're just getting that peak from the top, you're not even adjusted. You're not having even get haven't even got a chance to adjust to the oxygen. You know, at different points in the plane where you feel your equilibrium and you feel your body, you just feel everything on different points when it's ascending and, de and descending. Our body wouldn't be able to take going from this to that. That's why those rockets that they have, those spaceships, is special technology that got to go into it because your body not supposed to be able to go from that to that it's not supposed to be able to you got to be able to go halfway up the mountain to know what that air feels like that air up there you got to know what it feels like you got to be close to it taste it taste the air you got to be close to it or anything else it might it might spook you off that cliff that you got to jump off of you're supposed to jump off the cliff down there to where your success is but if you ain't scaled the mountain, then you ain't never been through nothing. But if you know already scaled the mountain and looked down, then once you get to the cliff, you know that's the same distance that you just climbed the mountain. But if you ain't climbed the mountain or came halfway up the mountain, then that distance is going to be too much for you. But don't you want to know how high you can soar? Don't you just want to know? Like as kids, we used to do this thing. Are you ready? One, two, three. You take a step, then you jump, and you try to slap hands, and you see who can jump the highest. I don't know what the name of that game was, but if you came from a, t a town or a city that played basketball, niggas wanted to know, like, how high could you jump? Oh, I, oh, how did you? Uh-uh. No, no, no. You jumped too soon. Whatever it was. But it's all right. One, two, three. Don't you want to know how high you can soar? And then it turned into, hey, can you smack glass? And then it was, can you grab rim? I was out of it. By the time it got to that, can you grab rim? I was out of it. <laughs> but don't you want to know how high you can soar? Don't you want to just know? I mean, your manufacturer got you built for it. And the quote of the day comes from the dip set and the locks versus. They was going back and forth. You know, kisses on the mic. Can I talk? Let me talk. Hold on, Sheik, Luch, let me talk. Got to the point where they was going back and forth with Cam. Different song. Now they kicking the locks ass. I mean, I'm sorry. They, the locks is kicking dip set ass. Cam doing a lot of talking between the songs. And Kiss said this, do your song. Hey, just do your, do your song. Do your song. I ain't with the talk. Do your song. And I took that on times when I didn't want to work out, when I got a two-mile run. Do your two miles. Now, you, after that, you can add on some more to the workout. But at least do your two miles. Do your song. Whatever it is. That minimum that you know that you can go to because of manufacturer, do your song, man. Go out and do because it's your song. Do your song. Like Kiss said, do your song. Don't let me hear about you not doing your song. Go out there and do your song, bro. That's all. That's it. Because that's all you can do. But don't sit at the crib not doing it. Do your song. You like to make clothes. I've always in, been in, in the making clothes. Save your money. Figure this out. Get you a sewing machine. Take you some classes. Just go on YouTube. Whatever it is, do your song. I've always been great at making drinks. Oh, man, I wonder, can I be a bartender? Do Take the necessary, necessary steps to start your own company. Start with just your friends. However it is, do your song. That's the quote of the day. Do your song, man. That's it. I ain't asking you to do nobody else's song or look at what nobody else is. Do your chic, luch, let me talk. Do your song. Whatever it is, you know what it is. Do it. I'm serious, man. Do it, bro. Sis, whatever it is, do it, do it, man. I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of you going back and forth. I'm tired of you looking at the notes in your phone. 
Or I'm tired of somebody else bringing it up and like, hey, what about, I'm, do it. Something that you didn't did before, go back to it. Do your song. Shit. And then the love yourself, love somebody else. The love yourself, validate your wildest dreams. I'm going to say that again for loving yourself. Validate your wildest dreams. Believe in them. At least run through the first wall to whatever setup to that dream is. Believe in your wildest dreams. Validate them. But validate your wildest dreams because you got that, that, that your wildest dream is for a reason. So you got the power to validate that wildest dream. All you got to do is be the kickstarter. Remember, you're not in control of that second win. Some of these people who are millionaires right at the top of their field, they never thought that they can get there. I want to make it to the NBA. Maybe they didn't know they was going to be the all-time leading scorer or lead the leading scoring this year or get this many MVPs. I, I really seriously highly doubt the Joker thought uh, that he was going to win three MVPs in the NBA. He probably thought, I can make the NBA, and I can probably be a good player. At some point, that's what he thought. I highly doubt he thought he was going to win three MVPs. Maybe he thought he can be an all-star, but I highly doubt that man thought he can win three MVPs. Same thing goes for Giannis Antetokounmpo, however you say that nigga name. I highly doubt that they thought they was going to be be able to win multiple MVPs originally starting out. But they had to be the kickstarter. They had to validate their wildest dreams just by starting and getting to that wall and going to climb it that second win. They had to validate. That's their wildest dreams. Just to dream or a thought is like making it to the NBA and being an all-star. But their wildest dream is being the best ever. And to validate that, all they had to do was start. And when they got to that wall, well, all they had, no, all they had to do was start and get to the wall. The second win is going to take over from there and the work that you put in. So to love yourself, validate your wildest dreams, sis. Validate it. Don't just let it sit there. Give it some. Give it, give it some real time. Give it some real effort. Give it some real consideration. Validate your wildest dreams. And for the love of somebody else, don't be afraid or ashamed to pray for others. Because what could it hurt? Like we say that all the time, well, I'm going to pray for you. Oh, my goodness. Or stuff happening. I think we got so desensitized to things happening because of social media and just the media, period. Well, we just got away from something simple as just really praying. Don't be afraid or ashamed to pray for somebody else. You should almost do it daily. It's enough people that you know or you know about or it's enough people business where you can send a prayer. And it ain't always got to be they going through calamity to get a prayer. Sometimes I just need a prayer because I'm I'm kind of going through it trying to get to my second win. It's kind of looking bleak. So don't be afraid or ashamed to pray for somebody else. Prayer does work. And you don't have to be on the other side of it knowing that it worked. That ain't your job. Do your song. And that's just, you got the ability, if you got that relationship with God, to pray for yourself and others. If you got that ability, the manufacturer gave you that. The manufacturer gave you that ability, then don't be afraid or ashamed. Go ahead and pray for other people. Because what could it hurt? Ain't like God going to be like, oh, no, you should be praying for yourself, nigga. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> like, come on, man. What could it hurt? Great episode. I hope y'all learned something. I learned something talking to y'all. I always learn something in talking to y'all. Sometimes I'm preaching to the choir. Even though I, I built the episode out, when I'm talking, I'm just freestyling on how I actually feel. So sometimes I'm preaching to the choir. I hope y'all learned something. I definitely learned something today. But you got to run through that second win, dog. Run to and through that second win because you are not the manufacturer and you can't even fathom what the manufacturer have, has put into you to be, able, to be able to go to that max level. But your job is to just start it. Remember, all you're doing is steering, but you're not in control of the power and the ability 
of that mode of transit, which is you, which is your body, which is your spirit, which is manufactured by God. But you can strengthen that second wind. Remember, that second wind come out when that alarm, that emergency alarm come out, when it's summoned by an emptying tank. You strengthen that second wind by bring them out, bring them out. You got to bring them out more. Bring them out more. Now, he used to being in the sun. Now, he used to doing this. Now, it's going to be longer before you need him. But when he come, he going to fuck shit up. But you got to keep going and, and develop that, that, that practice, right? Remember, practice is when you get better. That's when you test your limits. And remember, do your song. I appreciate y'all kicking it with me once again, man. It's love, man. I love y'all. Hey, and remember, you cannot make sense without keeping it a buck. You heard? The only thing that matters in this world who wanted more luck. Never not believed in me. That's just how I'm cut. Be a man about your word. Always keep that shit a buck. And if a nigga test your bloodline, stand for yours. The only thing that matters in this world who wants it more, yeah.